Hey, good morning. Welcome, everyone. Good to be with you on this Thursday morning. And of course, for us, it's the last devotion for the week. So I just want to say thank you for uh, for watching this week and <clears throat> being a part of the devotion, whether you do it live or whether you watch at another time. Thank you. God bless you. Appreciate that. Hey, Brother John, good morning. And, uh, you know, as always, uh, I want to encourage you to be in prayer for your services. Carol, good morning uh, this week coming and uh, bathe them in prayer. Pray for the day. Pray for the presence of the Lord. Pray for a move of God in your services. That would be a blessing, wouldn't it? To see God moving in our services. Brother Michael, good morning. Um, pray for visitors. If you've been inviting folks to come to church or you've been witnessing to people during the week or whatever it is, I pray that they would come and be a part of your service as well as a part of ours. So God bless you and uh, look forward to uh, look forward to Sunday as always. All right, let's go to uh, <clears throat> let's go to Revelation chapter five and read Judy. Good morning. Reading through Revelation again. You know, when something uh, of great importance is is opened up, Trace. Good morning. Let's say let's say for example a, a war memorial. Okay, uh, when you want to open that, when you want to dedicate that, you you generally find someone who is worthy to do that. Someone of notoriety. Say perhaps say um, uh, General Peter Cosgrove. You know, someone who's fought in the military, who's led, who's who's been there and done that, right? So, you know, you wouldn't put an advertisement in the paper and saying, looking for someone to open up a warm, oh yeah, we'll pick you some, you know, some pleb from from out there in uh, in in uh, <laughs> suburban land, you know what I mean? No, you get someone of notoriety. Or, you know, if a city builds a building or builds a bridge, generally if it's named after somebody, and that someone's still alive, you get them to open it up, or someone from the family, right? So you look for someone who is connected in some way uh, to what's being done, all right? You, you find someone who is worthy to do that. There's a question that rang out in the throne room of heaven. In Revelation chapters 4 and 5, we get this, we get this throne room scene, this scenario, where uh, where John in chapter four and verse number one is is taken up into heaven. By the way, it's not a bodily resurrection; it's a spiritual resurrection. So it's it's not the rapture; it's a spiritual one, just like Ezekiel when he was caught up in the spirit. Right, John was taken up in the spirit. Right, and he he saw the throne room there in chapter four and everything that's going on, and and it continues on into chapter five. And this this question rings out. And it's found in verse number two. And he says, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Who is worthy? And that's the thought this morning. Who is worthy? It's a great chapter, chapter five. And we're just going to stay in chapter five this morning. And we're just going to talk about the Lord Jesus this morning. And so when we think about who is worthy, and, 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 and it says this, verse 3, And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, uh, neither to look thereon. Verse, uh, verse 4, And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book. No man in heaven, in earth, under the earth, no man was worthy to open this book. There is something of great importance, something of great significance is about to take place. There is this book with seven seals. The, the call goes out, who's worthy? They search through heaven. Of course, the rapture hasn't taken place yet, so the multitudes appear. But they're searching through heaven and on earth. Anyone know worthy on earth and under earth? There was no one that was worthy. The only one that was worthy was the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Who is worthy? The Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is only worthy. What made do you? What made the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you think what made him worthy to open this book? You say, "Well, he was the Lord. Surely, just being the Lord Jesus Christ, he was worthy in and of that in and of itself." And you know, we would say probably right. I mean, that's that's true. He he's worthy because of who he is. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. But it really gives us the, 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 uh, the point here of why he was worthy, because it says he hath prevailed. He hath prevailed. That's what made Jesus worthy 
to open the seals, to open this book, because the lamb had prevailed. No man had prevailed. And we'll talk a little bit about what he prevailed over in a moment. But who's worthy? No man was worthy. And he says, don't cry, don't weep. Here is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He hath prevailed to open. He hath prevailed to open. Then we are confronted with a very graphic scene. Look at what it says in verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Stood a lamb as it had been slain. Jesus doesn't say anything here. Jesus doesn't put his hand and say, hey, 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 I'm the one that's worthy. He doesn't have to say anything. He stands up in the midst and basically reveals to everyone that's there why he is worthy because he stands there as a lamb as it had been slain. That's, that's pretty graphic when you think about it. Now, when, when most people in, the, in a new generation today, you know, you go down the shop, everything's done. The cow's been milked. It's already in the, in the carton and the meat's all packaged. And, and even if you've got a butcher there, it's the, the meat's all dressed and, you know, it's all sliced up. And, and it really doesn't look confronting. It's just, wow, it's just meat there. But, um, Marie, good morning. If you were to take the process back to the beginning, all right, you go back to when that animal has to be killed. You think about the Old Testament and when they had to they had to slay the lamb, you know what I mean, for the sacrifices. And you go back to even when Solomon dedicated the temple. I mean, you read about how many sheep were slaughtered, how many cattle were slaughtered and the blood spilt, right, to dedicate this. It was in honor of sacrifice under the Lord. Now, there were thousands back then, thousands of sheep that were slaughtered and the blood just gushing out as a, as a sacrifice under the Lord. What a mess, right? And even one sheep slaughtered can make a mess, you know. And that animal would have been tied by its legs so it couldn't get away anywhere. And we used to do it on the farm. I don't know whether any of you have done any farm butchering before. I remember the first time as a kid, I, I went with my dad to do it and I thought, man, I, I, I'm not going to like this. I'm never going to eat meat ever again. You know what I mean? But I soon got over that. Um, and, and it was confronting to me as a kid. It was, as it was confronting. Here's this, here's this sheep that's just sitting there and, you know, it's, it's, it's scared. It doesn't know what's going to happen. And, and then I, it was so quick. I tell you what, my dad was so quick, got the sharp knife. You know, put put it behind here, and, and you just ram it through, and bring it out, and snap its neck, and and then you just leave it. You untie its legs so that it can bleed out, and and it's confronting the blood and the mess and everything. Then you hang it up, and you, it is. You say, "Wow, this is pretty graphic." For well, he he stood as a lamb that was slain. He didn't have to say anything as to why he was worthy. The picture itself. As he stood in the midst, he didn't have to say anything. He showed why he was worthy. I was slain, but I was slain and I come back to life. I prevailed. I alone, Jesus is saying by just standing there, I alone prevailed. You know, when you think about the lamb prevailing, and this is why he was worthy. Look at what it says in verse 12, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Worthy is the lamb. You know, when we think about how worthy Jesus is, we need to stop and consider this for a moment. That your saviour is, your saviour, my saviour is worthy. He's worthy. I like what it says in chapter 4 and verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You alone, Lord, are worthy. You know, I really wish we'd get a hold of that because, you know, when we come together on a Sunday corporately, we come together to acknowledge how worthy our Savior is. Pastor Samuel, good morning. And it really does bug me. And I'm not saying if, if Christians are sick. That's what I'm saying. If people are sick, they're sick, whatever. But it bugs me when people take lightly attending church with the brethren. 
You see, he's worthy of, of, he's worthy of your attendance on that day because he prevailed. He's worthy for you to assemble with the brethren this Sunday to sing praises and worship him and thank him and adore him. It doesn't have to be a special day. Listen, every Sunday is a special day where, where we corporately come together and we say, Lord, you're worthy. You are worthy. Now, he's worthy of your praise every day. He's worthy of that because of what he's done. He stood as a lamb that had been slain, bloodied. He was he was a bloodied mess. When he stood in when he stood in the throne room, he didn't stand in all his finery and all his royal regalia and all that. He didn't stand there with the with whatever. He stood there as a lamb that had been slain. He was he, he you saw him with with his beatings and the whippings and the blood. It was it was a gruesome sight, but it spoke volumes. It said, I'm worthy. I am worthy. And I'm certainly glad that the Lord Jesus Christ was worthy to open the seals of the book. No man was. No man went through what Jesus went through. No man was worthy to open up the book and the seals because the man went through what... It, could you imagine from it? Just stop from here. Could you say, Lord, I want to go to heaven. I want to have eternal life. All right, you've got to pay for your own sins. Could you imagine if Jesus said, you've got to pay for your own sins. You've got to go through. I was going to do it for you. But hey, you want to do it? You want to go through everything that I went through? Then you go for it. I'm certainly glad that I don't have to do that. I'm glad. I, I, I rejoice that the lamb was worthy. I'm, I rejoice that the Lord went through that so that you and I don't have to. And here he is, he stood worthy. You know, when you think about what J Jesus prevailed, when Jesus came to this earth, he came to earth for the sole purpose to die. He was born to die. It's one of my favorite Christmas carols. Born to die upon Calvary. And I love that. He was That was the purpose for Jesus' coming, to die on Calvary, to, to give salvation to all of mankind. And so he was worthy enough because he prevailed, firstly, over the temptation. You think of all of our Lord's life, you know, the temptation in the wilderness. You know, what he went through there when Satan tempted him, trying again to stop him, if you please, from fulfilling God's purpose for the Lord Jesus Christ. He prevailed over that. He, he prevailed over... People trying to take his life early and what it should have been. He prevailed even over Peter saying, no, Lord, forbid it. No way, you can't go. And then Peter, Jesus turns and says, get thee behind me, Satan. He prevailed over that. He prevailed over the cross. He prevailed over sin. He prevailed over death. And ultimately, he prevailed over Satan. Now you talk about someone who is worthy. Who's worthy? Who is worthy? The call goes out. And here's Jesus. He stands in the midst, doesn't say a word. The, the graphic, gruesome picture of him just standing there spoke volumes and says, I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm glad he prevailed, aren't you? I'm glad he prevailed. I'm glad that, that yes, he died and was buried and he rose again. And uh, he stands there. No man prevailed over it. Now, Let's have a think about this for a moment in this chapter and let's let's look from our perspective of why Jesus is worthy, not just to open the book and loose the seals, but why he is worthy to receive what he ought to be receiving. And, and because he is worthy, he is worthy of your worship. Now have a look at this in, in verse number eight. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. They fell down before the Lamb. What is that a picture of? That, that is not just a picture of submission, though it is. It's a picture of humility. Yes, it is. But it is a great picture of worship. Really, the true meaning of worship, yes, is sacrifice, but it is also to lay prostrate. It is to just to lay down, to fall down and to worship. It gives recognition that you are the one Lord who is to be worshipped. He's worthy of your worship. He's worthy of your worship. I hope you worship him day to day. 
Uh, I hope you you do what should be done. You know, you don't. Have, I'm not saying you worship him all day. You know what I mean. But even in your heart, you can be worshiping him, even singing a song under him or whatever it is. And may we be reminded that that he is worthy of that worship Monday through to Saturday, and then we get together on a Sunday. And I know that some churches say worship service. You know, and and that, you know, may give a bit of a false information because sometimes we think, well, Sunday is the only day I worship. No, we ought to worship him all week. Why? Because he's worthy. He's worthy of your worship. I'm grateful that we get to worship, as I said, as a, as a corporate body. We come together and we sing and, and I hope your singing is powerful. I hope your singing on Sunday is loud and I hope it's with exuberance and I hope there's praising and worshiping and just letting it all out before the Lord because he's worthy. You know, this is why he gets so jealous, because he is a jealous God. This is why he gets so jealous when you elevate things above him. You know, when when you when you put things before him. Now, I this is me personally. All right, I I don't think anything should be put above Jesus, especially on a Sunday. All right, it is, it is the Lord's day, and it really bugs me. It really grinds me, actually that people are willing to forego going to church with the brethren because there's something else over here. I, to be honest with you, know, I, I know of so many that have not come to church because oh, I've got a family event over there and a family event here and, and uh, you know, I'm going to see this and I'm going to do that. And oh, the Lord understands. The, I know what the Lord understands. The Lord understands if, if if he stood before you as a lamb that is slain, he wouldn't have to say a word. You would just fall down. We would just fall down and we would worship him because he is worthy. He's worthy of your worship. He's worthy of your prayers. It says in that verse that there were vials, didn't it? Golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Isn't that interesting that all our prayers... As we pray, they're put in a vial and they're, they're opened up and, and it, it smells good to God when we pray. He's worthy of your prayers. You see, when we pray unto the Lord, we're saying, Lord, I, I, I'm not just worshipping you in prayer. I'm not just praising you in prayer. I, I'm not just communing with you in prayer. I'm letting you know, Lord, that you are my God. You're my saviour. And yes, I want to commune with you, but, but I realise that I need you. You see, when we, when we have a very weak or anemic prayer life, when we fail to pray, we're basically saying, well, Lord, I can take care of this alone and, and I can do this on my own. And how many of us worked out by now that we can't, right? So he is worthy of your prayers. He's worthy of your prayers. You know, I don't know how you, how you pray. I don't know um, what you do. I know for me just recently, uh, the, the Lord just, uh, just gave me some ideas about prayer, my prayer life and, and, and to be a little bit more in tune with that. All right. So I've got my calendar and, and from Monday to Friday, I have allocated different folks in our church, different days that, that I would pray for them throughout the day. And then Saturday is a day that I pray for preachers. And then Sunday is, of course, I'm going to pray for our service on a Sunday for God to meet with us, right? Because he's worthy of our prayers. He's worthy of your prayers. You know, if, if I'm not saying, and, and God forbid that we should pray mechanically. It ought, to, it ought to just come naturally flowing from our spirit to pray unto him, right? To, to commune with him. And I know there's opposition. I get that. And, and I understand that prayer is probably one of the hardest things for Christians to do. But folks, let me tell you something. He's worthy of our prayers. All right. He's worthy of our prayers. Thirdly, he's worthy of our praise. Look at verse number nine. He's worthy of our praise. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, people and nations. I tell you what. That's, that's worthy of praise right there, right? I mean, they sung a song. Hey, you know, <laughs> I hope and pray your singing is with, with fervency on Sunday. Because think about that. We're praising him because you're worthy to open these seals. You're worthy to, to, to do this amazing thing that's going to take place. And, and, and those seven seals are going to be opened up. And, and, and you're worthy of our praise because you redeemed us to God by your blood. That, that blood that, that was flowing. You, you're worthy. Man, alive, I pray that that would stir our hearts to praise him. He's worthy of your praise. 
You know, we, we again, uh, in an earthly scene, we praise so much stuff. There's nothing wrong. We should praise our children for what they do. Good When they do good, we should, you know, praise our spouses. We praise our work colleagues or whatever. You know, naturally speaking, there is praising that goes on from a day to day. But brethren, who is more worthy to receive your praise than the Lord Jesus himself because of what he prevailed over? He prevailed. I love it. He redeemed us to God. He purchased us with his blood by the by thy blood out of every kindred, every kindred, everybody. You get to chapter seven. You get to chapter seven of Revelation, and there's this there's this amazing picture in heaven saying about how many people were there. Look at verse nine. And this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and under the Lamb. I tell you what, let's start practicing praising with exuberance right now. Amen. Let's let's get with it when we get together on Sunday. Let's not stand there all stoic and stiff. I said the other day that all of you, your spirit, your soul and your body should be involved in your praise and worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every part of you. You say, my body? What do you mean? You mean I'm going to dance? No, you can raise your hands and praise him. You can clap and praise him. You ought to give some emotion into your praising. Your spirit should be in there because he's looking for those to worship in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Let's get with it on Sunday and let's praise the Lord. Lastly, let's have a look at this. He's worthy of your agreement. He's worthy of your agreement. Verse 13, every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Bless, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and under the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. <laughs> Amen. We ought to give. We, you know what? I love amen means so be it. Amen says I'm in agreement with you. And I tell you, you know, on Sunday when you're singing, there ought to be some amen. You sing a line in, the, in a song that, that really exalts the Savior. Amen. You know what I mean? Or the preacher's preaching a, a, a point in a message. Men and women. Men and women should say, Amen, as led by the Spirit. You know what you're saying? I, I, I agree with you, Lord. Sometimes we just really bring it down, say, oh, the, the preacher's preaching, and we say amen to the preacher. No, we're saying amen to the Lord. Not saying that the, Lord, that the preacher is the Lord. I'm saying the message is the Lord's. God is speaking to us. And when there is a point in the song or in the message, you hear something, say amen. Praise. Yes, I agree with that. Hallelujah. He's worthy of your agreement. He's worthy of your agreement. I, share, I shared this with, with the folks at Open Door um, the other day. In, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18, Jesus is speaking. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Jesus had to amen himself. <laughs> I tell you, I don't want the Lord to amen himself. I want to amen the Lord, right? We all should want to say amen to that. We all should say, man, you're alive forevermore. Amen. I agree. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All that sort of stuff. Man, we ought to, we ought to give agreement to what he is saying. He's worthy of your agreement. He's worthy of that. And only the Lord Jesus Christ, brethren, only the Lord Jesus Christ is worthy because he prevailed. Worthy is the Lamb to receive everything that is due him because he prevailed. Hallelujah. Worship him. Worship him. He is worthy. Praise him. He is worthy. Pray to him. He is worthy. Agree with him because he is worthy. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Truly, Lord, you are worthy. So grateful that you stood there as a lamb that had been slain, speaking volumes and saying, I am worthy because I prevailed. And we thank you for that, Lord. Lead us and guide us today as we head into our Sunday in our churches. We do pray that you would be with us. And I pray that there would be joy, excitement, praising and worshipping on that day as we assemble to give all of those things glory and honour to the Lamb that was slain. We love you, Lord, and thank you for a great day today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for joining all week. I appreciate that. Have a great day in the Lord. Have a great Sunday. 
And Lord willing, we'll see you again on Monday morning. God bless you and bye for now.